we were recording. Melina. Okay. We're going to bring the capital product projects and operations capital meeting capital on board. Uh, is there any courtesy of the floor? With that, we don't have any. We're going to go right into discussion regarding Article 13 contracts, Nile Bridge Corporation. Oh, Mike. Here we go. Clearing the rubble. All right. So this contract is for the rehabilitation of County Bridge 8, which is Crestman Road in Williams Township. Um, if you recall back to the uh, Finance Committee meeting and the uh, hurricane that I had referenced back in 2018 that had caused the damage at Fry's Run Park, that same storm also took out this bridge um, like less than a half mile away. So um, not a great day for me, but um, here we are to, uh, to try to rectify that. Um, so I do have with me tonight uh, Sean Bauer and Kent Weibold from Nileep Construction. And if you have any questions about... Uh, their qualifications to uh, handle this job, uh, they'd be more than happy to address them. My question to you is 14 people looked at it and one bid's all we got? Yeah, so we did have the engineering consultant on the project. They looked at the list of bridge contractors who had accessed the documents on public purchase and they reached out to them after the bids came back in to see you know, if there was any particular reason why they didn't bid the job. Um, it mostly came down to scheduling. Uh, a lot of the firms that had accessed it said they just didn't have any availability in their construction schedules to accommodate this project. Okay, I don't have a problem with Nileve. Many, many moons ago when I was an apprentice, I actually worked for them. So oh, wow. <laughs> when, I don't want to get into it. Yeah, no. Anybody got any questions on this? I do. Watch it with the... Go ahead, Mr. McGee, before I go to John. Oh, no, I don't. Uh, that was this All right, thing. Madam President. Don't Sorry. spit when he says when. What's the timeline on the project? That's all, because I, I know I asked it before and I asked it when we originally talked about this, but when's the start and when do we hope to complete? Um, we'd be looking at a, a fall start date for this project. And I believe it's a one year uh, construction duration. Is that half a, way, half a mile away from 611? Uh, Maybe? Yes, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly where it is now. It's John off of Houston. Coffee Town Road again. Coffee, <laughs> Coffee Town Road where I lost my friend. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? John. Yeah, real quickly, um, I, I noticed that it says uh, the funding is Act 13 monies. It was my understanding that we were supposed to get money from FEMA. Yes. This. What happened with that? Um, we are still getting money from FEMA on a, a reimbursement basis. Um, it was roughly 268000 that FEMA would be contributing to the project. The rest would be funded out, out of uh, Act 13. Yes, Mr. <coughs> oh, Lott. Can I get off this bridge and ask you about Lower Socken Road? Is that our bridge that's been out for a long time on Lower Socken Road? Mm, that would be PennDOT. That's PennDOT's bridge. I was too lazy uh, to go out and look at it, but it's, PennDOT's not real quick on fixing that bridge. Thank you. Um, if there's no other... I'll move it forward if you want. No, no, no. I said, I, I was like, I Any other that questions? Bridge. If not, so moved. So moved. That's quick and fairly, gentlemen. Yep. Next one on the agenda. Don't we have to move it? Wait. He moved it. You forward. moved it? I moved. Weren't you, oh. Ma Madam President, weren't you paying attention? I was in a smooth meeting. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Myers, if I may, would you like a representative from Niley present at the uh, tomorrow's council meeting? I don't believe it's necessary. I think everything we've gotten, all the questions and the answered, and, and, and their reputation speaks for itself. So, Okay. Thank if you. it's a problem, I know where to find them in a mess. Uh -uh. <laughs> okay. No, gentlemen, we won't need you tomorrow. Thank you for being here and being patient. Let's move on to a consideration for the next one, the Johnson Controls. Is that these gentlemen over here? That is. The patient men that have been here all night. Go on, speak on it, Mike. Okay, just to give a little bit of background on this, um, last fall uh, we were approached by Johnson Controls to uh, just see if the county had any interest in um, exploring the potential for another Giza project. 
and GISA stands for Guaranteed Energy Savings Agreement. Um, the basis, be, uh, you know, basis for those projects is essentially you would be completing um, a large number of capital equipment upgrades in one project, and the project would be funded using the energy savings as well as the operational and maintenance savings and uh, deferred uh, capital or capital cost avoidance, essentially, that you would be normally budgeting for. Um, so over the past couple of months, we've been working with Johnson Controls to um, explore the feasibility and whether or not this is a project that would make sense for the county. And uh, given the, the current age of a lot of our infrastructure here, a lot of it was installed 20 years ago during a prior Giza project that was done by Johnson Controls or going on 10 years ago with a previous Giza that was done by McClure Company. Um, we think that we're at a point now where it would make financial sense for the county to explore this option rather than doing our um, you know, piecemeal uh, equipment replacements as part of a normal capital budget. Um, so I have with me tonight um, Matthew Holt, John Poggi, and uh, John or Jeff, Jeff Kappel, I'm sorry. Um, and they can uh, speak further to the process that we've been through to date, as well as answer any, any questions about um, you know, how this would look moving forward. Uh, but I would just like to clarify that you know, we're, we're not looking to just jump immediately into a you know, multi-million dollar project here. Um, so what this is essentially about would be authorizing the county to proceed with the next step, which would be engaging in an uh, investment grade audit which would look much closer at individual projects that, that the county has a need for to assess more, um, you know, how much potential energy savings are there, to refine the construction cost estimates, to really develop a more detailed scope of what this project could be. And as you can imagine, that takes a tremendous amount of time and resources from the company to conduct that investment grade audit. Um, so they had provided a project development agreement to us that I believe was included in your handouts. Um, we would like the authorization to proceed with that project development agreement. Um, there is a, a capped cost on it of a not to exceed 150000 And that is only applicable if the county were to conduct this audit and decide that it's not something that, that we want to proceed with at that time. Um, if we do conclude that the project does make um, you know, financial and technical sense for us, um, we wouldn't be paying anything out of pocket for this investment grade audit. It would just get rolled into the larger uh, construction project. Um, so with that introduction, I guess I'd like to turn it over to, to Johnson Controls for their presentation. Can I, Gentlemen, if you can make your way over there. Can I ask Mike a question? Before, we go. Mike, Mike. before you go. Before you go, can I ask you a quick question? I'm sorry, gentlemen. You uh, we've done this before, and I guess you said it's saving, it's paid for because of savings. So from the last one, what savings did we realize? Did we try and, like, audit ourselves to try and keep track of, because it makes sense if, in fact, there was savings to offset the cost. So do we have any sense of what those savings were when we've done this before? Yes. So with these types of contracts, there is a independent verification of the savings that is conducted. I believe it's required for the first few years of the project. And what we found when we were doing these, um, you know, this verification with the last Giza was it was it was well um, overperforming the savings that that um, McClure Company had guaranteed us. Okay. So we were essentially just paying, you know. A decent sum of money to learn how much money we're saving and eventually it just reached a point where uh, this is kind of foolish so I, I hear mean, you they, so, uh, so we, are, we do have a we have a tracking system that we use with these types of things where they say we're going to save X amount and it pays for itself because we are and I just wanted to clarify that we have that kind of system where we can go back and say this in fact did save money yes we do, do we have that information on the McClure for the first few years, yes, we'll, we we'll have. provide that to you, sir, so you can okay. see it for yourself. Yeah, I, I mean, and I'm, I think it's great. I just wanted to double check our yeah. procedures. I, no, I think that's an excellent well, question. Thank you. Mr. Emil, was it Mr. Uh, Myers, may I? <laughs> Please. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Emil, um, wasn't that mostly a uh, building envelope uh, at the last Giza at Graystale? Yeah, that's Dollars correct. And such. Okay, so th this is more of uh, mechanical stuff, right? Yes, Electrical exactly. Okay, thank you. 
uh, Mr. Lott. So uh, you may have said it, but the hundred and fifty thousand, if we don't use it, that's what we pay. If we if we if we use if we use them, it, it gets kicked in. The the audit would that be valuable to us? If even if we decide financially it doesn't work, okay, financially Johnson Johnson, but that audit itself, because I'm looking at that hundred fifty. Mm -hmm. I mean, would that still be useful to the county? Yeah, it would. It would definitely be useful for us to, um, you know, help our, our capital planning. If even if we don't, uh, you know, go go down this uh, so, this path. I would so think. worst case scenario, that one hundred and fifty style gets gets us something. Yeah, it's if, it's if we find out this is not a value going the other direction. Thank you. Just one other thing before they go, they're going to be looking at all of our buildings. Yes, we already all, actually all of our facilities. Yes. So. Yes, we already actually conducted an initial walkthrough with Johnson Controls at, at, at all of our facilities, really, at the Government Center, Graysdale, um, you know, the, the 911 Center. Uh, we, we took them on a, a pretty comprehensive tour of all of our, our, all of our facilities just to uh, get a sense of the existing condition of our, our mechanical equipment. So um, we would be, this would be a countywide project for us. Okay, so that's also including lightings and savings from that standpoint? That they would even have to hit some of our parks. Yes. Okay. All right. Any other questions? If not, let Mr. McGee, uh, Mr. Kusak. Yeah, uh, I'm reading through this, and and I do realize we've we've done this before, both with Johnson and with McClure, and uh, I, I'm not sure, you know, how much additional savings we're going to get. But one thing that I don't see on here is our vehicle fleet. Uh, you know, from time to time, groups ask, uh, "Could we electrify our vehicle fleet? Would that be something you would look on, look at as part of this?" Uh, I, I don't think that would be within the scope of this project. We could look into it if you want us to. What was that? I, you. Was there a statement that you said that would we that could be do an that? Additional cost. Well, that, that's, if that's something, if if that's something you're interested in us looking at, we'll look at that. Uh, Maybe I, not in this context, but we will look at it. Yeah, I, I've had environmental groups ask, uh, I don't know, if maybe it was one of those questionnaires I filled out once upon a time, but um, <laughs> I, I, I think it's worth investigating because there are vehicles where we could have uh, electric because we don't, you know, travel that far that, that it may be possible. I think historically it's probably the spread in the cost of the, you know, traditional combustible versus the electric in a fleet the size of ours. But if we study it, we may find out that the, the cost isn't as great as it once was. In our new parking lot, we have electric charging stations now. Okay, gentlemen, please step forward and uh, state your name for the records. Yes, sir, we appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for having us today. Uh, my name's John Pogey. Um, how do I, I'm just trying to move this so I can, where is the button? Help me out. Where's the down? <laughs> you just got to press that. Click one. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Anyway, I'm sorry about that. Uh, again, John Pogey with Johnson Controls. Um, appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, okay, okay. Um, again, just do a couple quick introductions. Again, I'm Johnson Controls, been with the company about 25 years, 24 years, um, mostly in the public sector, which mostly a lot of state projects, um, county, municipalities, a lot of uh, some K-12 and things like that, mostly in the public sector. So very familiar with, with um, with GISA, um, kind of work in, in, in a few different states, Maryland, kind of mid-Atlantic area, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania area. So very familiar with the process, been involved with it for a number of years. So I'll let these, these folks introduce themselves. Jeff Kappel with Johnson Controls. Hey, doing? Matt Hall from Johnson Controls. I'm the uh, engineering project manager. So what we wanted to basically do, as, as Mike kind of gave you a good introduction, is again, we're here to kind of talk about the infrastructure as it relates to county facilities, right, and, and potential improvements and possibilities of what we can we can look at in those facilities. And what we wanted to share with you is a brief presentation of, of kind of where we've been and, and what we've found and where we're going. Um, where, where, lower left. Yep. Up top. Where is Get that arrow up there. The arrow in the top bar. Mike. This one? No. Nope, no, the other one. Next the one to the numbers. One. 
Should be full screen. One Down. Room, one no, 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 got no. a circle around it. They've got a circle on it. Up, up, up. <laughs> Down, up, up. There, there you go. go. That's it. You're good. You're, you're warm. There we go. There we go. Oh, all right. Okay. Man. So, <laughs> again, what we wanted to do is, is share with you again. That's like, a nice icebreaker. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that technically challenged. Usually I can press the button. But um, anyway, like we said, um, Mike said, we've been engaged with the county, obviously, and we appreciate the long relationship we've had with the county, and thank you for the, for the support and the business over the years. And that's, again, that's the local branch that really provides that support to you on an ongoing basis and a daily basis and so forth. So we're, we're kind of in a different group, but we, we work obviously closely with the branch. But our, our approach is more from the, the GISA projects and those type of projects where we, we more look at... I'll call them more longer term strategic kind of initiatives with our customers, whether it be counties, cities, whatever it might be. So, so like Mike said, we've been involved with the, with the county for, for a number of months now. We've kind of done some preliminary analysis and so forth, spent some time on site and going through some facilities. So we just want to kind of give you a quick update on, um, on where we've been, what we've done. So we'll talk a little bit about, you know, the process, just over what we've done in the past, kind of give you a little overview about what we see is the current situation, just a brief thing on, on guaranteed energy savings contracts, talk a little bit about the financial and some of the improvements and potentially the process and then just the next step. So um, hopefully we get want to keep you too long here. Um, this, um, okay, this, 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 I'll just keep going, but this, so anyway, this is, Basically, on the left, you can see, uh, uh, you know, where we when we started with this and where we've been. So those are the couple of meetings we've had. We've had some um, kickoff meetings. We've done some on-site meetings at some of the facilities and so forth. Um, had what we call a couple workshops with some of the staff and, and people, whether it be around technical and financial things. So we, we've we've gotten a lot of good feedback, a lot of good information from from everybody at the county. Um, what we see right now, is, and again, what we've uncovered within, you know, some of the discussions and things we've had, we, we try to kind of outline, well, what's the current situation? Because, again, that's the approach is to find out what, what's been going on so then we could potentially try to come back with, well, okay, here's where we're at. Where can we, where, where can we go from here? So um, we obviously talked about the relationship we have. We spent some good time uh, in some of the facilities. Again, the prison we know, for example, you know, it's obviously an older facility with some, some aging infrastructure and a lot of um, systems in there that need moder modernization and upgrades. And um, just as a side like we uh, side like from a company standpoint, Johnson Controls, we are very active in, from a national perspective, in what I call the corrections market, if you will. We see that as a, it's a very, um, I guess, a significant market for us across the country. And when I, when I talk about that, it's about state corrections, it's about county, county facilities, county corrections, regional jails, and juvenile centers, and so forth. So we have a lot of experience in that, in that particular area, per se, that we would obviously bring to the table here when we, when we dig into the, more of the details with, uh, with the prison here in, uh, in Northampton. So, um, so that's as far as the, pri uh, the prison. Um, generally, some aging inf infrastructure that we saw with, within a lot of facilities, whether it be some of the mechanical systems, the electrical systems, the, the chillers, the boilers, and so forth. So those are some of the things that we've, we've been looking at to try to um, potentially bring into a project. Obviously, with the COVID, that, that's raised the whole issue about ventilation and, and security and facilities and, and things like that. So there's potentially the, some, some, some ideas there. That's, that's the current situation, and how can we potentially try to address some of those issues. And from a capital standpoint, and this is what we see here, kind of runs true with, with a lot of our customers. Capital money seems to be, it, it, it's kind of decreased, or it's, I'd say maybe not decreased a, a lot, but it's been reappropriated to other priorities, if you will. A lot of times, you know, when you, you know, if, if, it's, not fo if it's not broke, don't fix it, you know, maybe kind of thing. So whereas there's other, men, there's other priorities within the county where maybe the capital money wants to, should be spent on, whereas, you know, the, the actual systems and so forth might not get the, the funding that, that's required, if you will. Um, <clears throat> so what we've, 
in some of our discussions up to this point, we've tried to lay out some goals and where we want to, you know, what, what might make sense for, for the county here. So obviously we're talking about modernizing the infrastructure, you know, the aging infrastructure. We can pr provide some alternatives from the energy, from the funding standpoint to, again, have this be funded more like we like the GISA process is, is through, through savings, through your funding from re reductions in your operational budget. So uh, it wouldn't be, there wouldn't be no requirement for, I'll call it new money or capital money. It would be just basically when you look at, you know, an operating budget and you have all these pieces of the pie, whether it be utilities or preventive maintenance or deferred maintenance or repairs. So you look at that, that, that overall pie, we try to shrink that pie down whatever savings we get would be reinvested back into the operation and into the improvements into the buildings. Um, from a risk standpoint, we really, um, w the approach is where you, ha you have one company like a Johnson Controls responsible for this from beginning to end. So we are, so we try to reduce the risk, from technical risk and financial risk to the county because we're willing to take more of that risk on. So we would be upfront, we do the design, we do engineering, We'll do any of the analysis of the systems. We put together the project. We do the installation. We're involved with um, the measurement and verification, which addresses what, what one of the council folks asked about the, um, the savings. Measurement and verification is a key piece of this because that's something we provide as part of these programs because under the, pro under the process, we have to make sure that those savings happen each and every year because that's what's funding, funding the, um, the, the improvements. So we have a, a, an engineering team, that's all they do. They're designed to, to track the savings. They monitor the savings. We report back to the county, um, typically quarterly or on an annual basis, whatever makes the most sense. So that's how we will we'll try to reduce some of the risk associated with these kinds of projects. Um, this is just a, a brief slide on the process. Again, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it's been around, as Mike said, the GISA project process has been around for a number of years. Um, it's, it's, again, simple concept, look at the existing costs, reduce those costs, and then just reinvest that back into the, imp into the improvements and make the improvements, and then provide the guarantees associated with it. So pretty straightforward process, um, and, and again, one that obviously the county has, has implemented on a couple of, a couple of occasions. Um, well, we also spent some time just, again, at a high level, just wanted to share with you. We spent a little bit of time on the financials, obviously, to try to get, start getting a handle on some things. And just from a high level budget, you know, we, we kind of found about $2.3 in total, util total utility spend throughout the county. That's water, sewer, electric, natural gas. Um, and then, so that's the, the graph on the right. And then what the other table is, we also did a, a little bit of analysis as far as some of the preventive maintenance repairs, repairs and things like that that's taken place at some of the facilities over the years to try to, to quantify that. So again, this, this kind of starts the, the, the base, if you will, because once we get, this would be the, the, where we're starting out from the financial base. So we look at these numbers and the idea would be to try to shrink that down and whatever we can save would go toward, towards a project. Um, this, this is a, a little bit different than what we had. We're, it's, this is going to be a little bit longer, so I'm going to skip through some of these because I don't want to. We don't need to go into all the detail. But so the intent here. So what we've come up to so far with with our analysis, and this is again just high level, quick look. You know, initially we think it, it we should be able to at least reduce something in the range of two fifty to four hundred thousand dollars from that existing budget. And that would translate into about a, a five to ten million dollar project, five to ten million dollars worth of improvements in those facilities. And those improvements could be, uh, you know, all different, any kind of different type of mechanical and electric things. And I have some some things we can share with you that we've been investigated up to this point. So again, pretty straightforward. We want to now analyze the, the cost, reduce it, and put it back into the facilities. These are some, what I want to share with you real quick now are some of the improvements. Um, and again, just uh, when we get into these improvements, it's all about, we're, we're, we're all about, we're driven in our group, it's all about outcomes, right? We're, it's all about performance. Um, we're not really here selling a particular type of system or, or, or manufacturer, if you will, but our, we're charged with really delivering results, delivering the outcomes. So we're looking at modernizing your infrastructure, reduce the spending, and, uh, and like we said before, minimize the risk. And, and 
we're, we're kind of charged with, uh, again, um, producing the results. I mean, that's what it comes down to with, with these projects. Um, here's just kind of a list. And uh, again, what we did here is kind of a little table. We have some of the improvement measures we've looked at so far and we feel would, you know, are things that potentially would need further discussion, further analysis. And then kind of just highlighted where what buildings we think they would um, potentially be, be, um, be included, as, be addressed in which building. So just high level, and again, you can see it's, it goes from um, a lot of the steam distribution system, cooling improvements, look at some chiller replacements, a lot of con some control technology upgrades. Um, you know, we looked at LED lights. Now, we're, you know, obviously the county has done a lot already with the LED, and they've um, modernized and upgraded a number of the facilities and, and so forth. But our approach would just be to kind of augment that and complete it if, if there's things that haven't been done. And then also from the water standpoint, we look at upgrades to for water conservation. So those are, again, right now that's based on our preliminary analysis. Those are some of the ideas. And again, we try to be, when we look at this and we, we approach this project, we try to be comprehensive in nature when we go into a facility. We're not just looking at systems. We, we try to look at the building as a whole because when you think about it, all the buildings are, when it was designed, it was all designed to interact with one another. So it makes sense to look at the whole thing as a, as a total picture. So we'll come back with something that, that addresses or at least identifies things. Now, whether you know, everything can fit into a project, that's where we sit down with, with, with your staff and your team to prioritize things. But we'll, we'll, we'll come back and come up with any, a listing of all these improvements, and then we'll sit down, prioritize them, and then whatever makes the most sense to go forward, then we go forward with. But it is a collaborative approach. I will say that we're, we're not here, again, pushing any particular technology or system, but we will, we will sit down. And at the end of the day, when we come to a, a final project, final proposal, there really shouldn't be any, any surprises because we, we build this together. That's, that's really our approach is to build this jointly. So we want to make sure we, we, we're addressing all the needs and, and everything that the county wants and their goals and objectives so that at the end of the day, we come back for, with the final project, there's, there's no surprises. <clears throat> um, not going to go through these. These are just a lot of the detail. It kind of gets into more detail of all those different ECMs or all those different improvement measures we talked about. But uh, unless there's any questions, does anybody have any questions on any of the technical technical stuff? Because that's Matt can handle those. If, if there's any kind of questions on any of those different technologies that we're that we're talking about here. Um, sure. If not, I'll just kind of run through them if that's okay. Um, next part we just wanted to talk about is also as far as the, the pr procurement approach, which I'm going to let Jeff talk to. So, so just to summarize, um, as John mentioned, our goal is to identify energy savings and the, the operational expenditures that you're currently uh, receiving to offset the capital costs of doing the projects. And, and those are contractual guarantees that we make. So if we identify the savings, we apply them to the project, it becomes part of our contract. And if we don't deliver those, you don't pay us, right? So it is, it is the guarantee that drives us to provide you the upgrade of the systems, whether they're air conditioning, mechanical, what have you. So the first step of that is to uh, we would look forward to you approving to move forward with the, P the project development agreement, which kicks off the investment grade audit, where we deliver to you the project scope, the details, the costs, the guarantees, et cetera. And then the next step would be for you to move forward on the actual project. So one of the, one of the uh, steps that we'll go through is to provide a, a financial workshop where we identify various funding sources of capital, whether it's a TELP loan or whatever, whatever manner of, of uh, financing or funding that you want to proceed with. In conjunction with that, we would, we would propose uh, Sourcewell as a contracting vehicle. And the county is currently a member of the Sourcewell uh, Buying Cooperative Agreement. You're already doing business with them. And just to give you an idea of what the process is, 
Johnson Controls received a advertised solicitation. We responded to that solicitation. Our response was evaluated. We negotiated terms and conditions. We negotiated national pricing, and we won the competition. We were awarded a contract. Sourcewell has 50,000 members, which are all public sector and private higher ed universities who buy from the, off of this agreement. So you're already a, a user, you're already a member, and it would seem to make sense for you to save any additional procurement costs if you chose to move forward. So you, there's an avenue there for you to proceed. And there's an evaluation form of the process that we went through, and the benefits basically are that you save time and money at the end of the day. It's, it's, it's the most efficient procurement method that, that you'll ever see. And one of the things I noticed is that the county uh, purchases a lot of IT equipment, and there's a reason for that, because you want to protect your investment in existing technology. You don't want to get lowballed. <laughs> you want to buy the equipment that's going to fit into the architecture that you've established. And it's, it, it makes a lot of sense. So in terms of the timeline, the next steps, um, if you do decide to move forward um, with, the P, with the PDA uh, that's in front of you, uh, we'll establish the investment grade audit process. We'll do a detailed investigation. Uh, we'll deliver the audit to you. Um, we'll finalize the project. Funding will be in place. And you have a decision to make as to whether or not you want to move forward. And this is a timeline that you know, was put together a little uh, some time ago. But if it happens in May, if you execute the agreement, the investment grade audit can be completed in August, and if the board approves it, we can commence work in September. Any questions? Any questions from anybody? Yeah, I'll Bates? just ask the Go same ahead. question. Are, is your organization capable of looking at our fleet to determine whether or not there would be savings as part of the, this process? Yeah, no, I'd, I'd love to see that. I'd, I'd be interested because there's a lot of talk and the cost of electric vehicles is going down. It, it may save us money. I, I mean, right now gas is $3 a gallon, so there may be some savings. Sir, you need to be at the if microphone. You, don't speak, you need to come up to the microphone, please. <laughs> he doesn't want to know that. <laughs> so, so the answer is yes, we can look at the, uh, the fleet as a, as a possible solution. We'll do a preliminary evaluation at first just to keep us within our framework. And then if, uh, if the uh, scope is worth pursuing, we'll have a conversation about what we need to do to, to make that happen. Okay. Okay. Great. I appreciate that. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. May I? You, sir, uh, you, sir, how many, yeah. do you have a, any idea how many buildings you'll be looking at? Did you get a number on that? Well, there, there's four main, four main facilities. I mean, I saw those, but when yeah. it, you had a breakout of miscellaneous. Yeah. I, what, yeah. Do you have a number on that? Matt? You have about 12 facilities. Uh, 12, 12 facilities. I, it's no. awfully important you speak into the microphone because... Go ahead. Yeah, we you, do. you have about 12 facilities that we'll look at. So I would say any this is a complex that you have building, we're, we're going to look at. But as you know, your largest facilities are the Graysdale facility, the prison, yeah. and obviously this complex. No, I, yeah. I totally understand. We'll, we'll pay the fuel, but... I understand the return of investment, and uh, I think it's a good proactive move on, on the uh, facility folks here. Sure, and a big part of this is our early conversations um, with, uh, with Mr. Mealy will be, what projects do you want to target? So if there's a smaller facility where there's a, a major need that might get overlooked, we will try to capture that early on. Great. As you're speaking of our buildings, we also have a, a new facility that's out there by Grace Hill, too, that would fall in the scope. What would be the name of that facility? The, the forensic, forensic center is still in the warranty, or we don't include that in what's oh, going on with this? Yeah, we're, 
we're hoping we won't need any kind of that's, major capital that's, improvements that's there. That's not my point. Maybe about that's 20. Not, that's not the point. It, 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 I understand because it's brand new. We're not expecting anything. But it does not fall underneath anything that these guys are looking at? Is that what you're telling me? We haven't asked them to look into it. Just We haven't identified a need for them to look okay. into it. Okay. And how long is our warranty with that building? Uh, do you, do you, does that building come with a warranty? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if we own it, we got to fix it. Am I wrong? Yeah. This isn't this isn't as much about warranty as, as saving and capturing um, efficiencies. One of the things that we chose not to do at the forensic center was not to s go through the lead certified process, but we did include a lot of of lead certified okay. elements just to save the money and not to have the the thing there. So we're we're going to be more than good at the forensic center. Yeah, my my issue with that is because in case someone else asked that question, I'll make sure that was answered. Yes, madam. Gentlemen, did you, uh, did I hear that you had already done a project like this for us in the past? 2000, 2000, I believe. So your data is outdated, I guess. I was going to say, could you rely on some of your old data, but Twi I guess not. No, no, <laughs> no, things have, things have changed. So we need, we need to take a hard look to be, that maybe you to knew be accurate. I was hoping that maybe some of the cracks were in there. Yeah. But thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Yeah. McGee? Mr. Kusick brought up about the vehicle fleets. Have you done that in the past for another group? I, I do believe that we've evaluated that for for other uh, entities. Okay. I think it's it's really, you know, it's an issue of the payback. It's an issue of the size of the fleet, and it's not it's not at the top of the list in terms of energy savings. But having said that, if you want us to look at it, we will. What kind of, I'm sorry, can I jump back in? You I mean, already like, did. Done. <laughs> what kind of remediations, are, are some examples of remediations that you would propose? Like, just Go ahead. For those of us who not, are not engineers in any way. No, that's fine. I'll keep it simple. So if you look at the prison, um, I, I believe everybody's familiar with the, the existing complex dates back to 1871, I believe. Right. So um, there are challenges there where their ventilation uh, may be considered inadequate. There's no cooling in the original part of the facility. So these are all elements we can incorporate in the project and, and help uh, move along. If you take a facility like Raysdale, some of the chillers are getting close to 20 years old. Uh, they also don't have redundancy, so we could replace the chillers, maybe increase the capacity of the chiller plant, provide cooling more efficiently, but also provide added redundancy so you don't have a situation where you lose cooling in the facility. Any more questions? If not, yeah, motion on what to do with this? Tom. Motion to move. Motion made by Mr. McGee. Uh, in case we need any questions may be answered, can someone be available tomorrow? Yes, sir. Yeah. That should be it. Thank you for Thank your you. patience of being here so long. It's no problem. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. With that said, that's the end. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Let's get out of here. Thank you, gentlemen.